Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Welcome to episode number 176. And on this edition of the podcast, I'll be speaking with Jared Neve of Neve's Knives on YouTube and Instagram. Jared is one half of Neve's Knives. Uh, together with his wife, Kara, they review knives on their channel and they go into depth on the latest releases and they've been doing a lot of customs recently too. They talk a lot about build quality, blade geometry, and of course, sharpening. Jared has uh, become a bit of an expert sharpener. I should know he's sharpened a few of the knives I have around me here today. Uh, before we get into that, I'd like to say, uh, let us know what you think of the show. Let us know of uh, who you want to hear from or or what you, uh, what you like in knives and what you're looking forward to in 2021, call the listener line, 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487. If you call that and leave a little message, let us know, uh, you know what, you're, what you're thinking about, what you're looking forward to uh, in the knife release realm. And I'd like to put together a collage at some point soon. And uh, or a montage or whatever it is when you put a whole bunch of audio together and uh, hear some of your uh, hear some of your words right on the show. So uh, without further delay, I would love to bring you this conversation with Jared Neve. You know you're a knife junkie if you're as happy as a kid on Christmas morning when that new knife arrives in the mail. <laughs> that was a pretty, that. pretty good uh, liner there, Jared. Welcome to the show. Good to have you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, it's great to have you. And uh, man, I know you have been uh, reviewing a lot of really awesome knives. I mean, you've had a yeah. lot of great stuff come through your hands and across your review table uh, over the last, I don't know, six months. It seems like you've been just on fire. Uh, yeah. But before we get into all that stuff, let me know what you were carrying today. What the, This is a podcast. Oh, great. So it's actually a twofer because I went to work with the Yo Jumbo. And it was a workhorse today. I, I worked with it all day. And it was actually pretty surprising to me because I just got it back from Mike Emler and he used it. And it still had the factory edge, which is crazy because normally I would have always sharpened it by now. And um, I'm using this new stropping compound that is just absolutely insane. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. But, um, but right now in my pocket is the Spartan Harsey. With the Mayan calendar right there, there we go. Hold that still for a second. Let me check out that engraving. Wow, that is so cool. That's beautiful. Yeah, it really is. And then it's got all the bronze hardware. It's insane. I'm a big fan crazy, of that knife. The crazy part is, is that this was a gift. And we have someone um, that watches our channel that uh, nobody really knows about or anything. We call him Mr. Amazing. And he has sent us some of the most incredible gifts. I, I, I can't even fathom the, the knives he sent. He sent four hinders, um, four hinders, a uh, Spartan Harsey to, uh, I mean, just so many different knives. And I think 11 altogether as of right now. He even sent me a Rockstead. Oh. To keep. To keep. Oh, my gosh. And it's it blows me away, and um, and he says he's got a couple more he's gonna send, and if he's watching, I can't thank him enough. I mean, he's really gave us a lot of support. You know, and that's one thing that really burns me up is how selfish people are in this knife knife game. It's just <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the knife community is amazing, but uh, but you know, there's always gonna be some some people that. Uh, that, that don't like to see people get gifts, but uh, but yeah, for the most part, everybody's been so amazing to us. We've been we've been treated very well. So you had jumbo for work, and then uh, you came home. You had a little wardrobe change. Put put the Spartan Hearth in your pocket. So yes. so you said you were carrying the Yo Jumbo all day at work, and it was a workhorse. Um, yes. When I carry my knives to work, uh, it's usually cutting sandwiches. Maybe I got a little errant thread here. What about you when you go to to work? How do you use your knives? It's it's always different, but I do use my knife pretty much all day. Today it was uh, 
mostly plastic straps and then um, a whole bunch of cardboard. I had to basically compress cardboard into small boxes because we have a box of recycling, but we go through so much cardboard. It's insane. And there's no way it'll fit at the end of the week in the dumpster unless if we break it down. And then, but there's always something between um, the the straps, the cardboard, um, the plastic, the tape. It's just all day I'm using my knife. And then I always have the other guys, you know, asking me. So I always bring an extra knife hmm. to pass. There's all oh, every day there's a pass around knife. So are you, then, in, sorry, are, you in, are you in construction? No, I, I've always been in construction my whole life. The past two years I've been working in a distillery. Distill. Oh, that's right. We've had yeah. this conversation, but I think maybe I was drinking whiskey and now I, <laughs> I couldn't remember. So you're working in a distillery. So you're, you're, you're opening thousands of boxes and you have to compress them. So that's a lot of wear and tear on the edge with the, with the cardboard, those plastic straps. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I, I want to get into how sharpening works into your, your daily ritual and, and into your life. Uh, but I want I want to I want to find out before we get there um, how you know because it sounds like sharpening is very important with all the work you actually put on your knives all the mileage. Oh, uh, but how how did you get into the channel? How did you get into collecting and knives in general? Well, when I was younger, my my dad he uh, he was always into knives and firearms. So when I was younger, I just kind of was like born into it. And my dad, we always had a knife collection. We always were growing it. Um, you know, we, we went through times where like, like one time our whole collection got stolen and then we started rebuilding it again. So I've always been around knives, but then, but not to, um, I, because it was mostly fixed blades, some folders and way back then knives weren't as incredible as they are now. And then I wasn't around it for a few years, for a few years, I was just, you know, basically just, I'd have the knife, like, like a nice Kershaw or something from Walmart. Mm -hmm. But um, but then I started watching uh, channels and I started seeing this community and I, you know, and I always loved knives. So then when I seen this community, it just fired my knife, you know, like collection, whatever, back up. And I was like, oh, I got to get some more knives now. So then ever since then, it just started growing. And then I was like, man, I should just start a channel. And I, I'm actually surprised I'm even doing YouTube because I never would have thought not in a million years from the lifestyle I had, from the way I grew up, just everything. Never would have thought YouTube was would have ever been a thing. Uh, social so. media is, is something uh, I'm, I'm a little bit older than you. Social media is something I've kind of always bristled at a little bit. Like, oh, that's that's, you know, that's what teenagers do, you know. And then, the yeah, it's for the kids. <laughs> but yeah, uh, YouTube is is indispensable. I, I think that uh, social media in general is indispensable for, I'm sure, many, many industries. But I see it very clearly with the knife industry. That's how uh, we've seen so many careers kind of uh, um, fostered on Instagram, just from, you know, people watching, looking and commenting and and makers and uh, brands sort of. It's the future. It's yeah. the future. It, it really is, is now developing everything right in front of everyone's eyes. You get to see it in yeah. real time. It can be very exciting. Right. So uh, uh, what about Kara? Is she a social media person? Was this something that was uh, um, how, how, what, what's her involvement been and how is that, how is her love for knives grown? So she, uh, where she works, she's a, a barista. She's, she manages a Starbucks, but she was a barista at the time. And um, I knew like that if I could just get her to carry a knife for a couple weeks, she would see how useful it was. And after that happened, you know, she she kind of fell in love with them, too. And I think that is with just about everybody, you know, like when you actually carry one, you wind up finding out how useful it really is. And um, so she got into them and then every day she carries a knife. She never doesn't have a knife on. her, So. But, uh, but then with the channel, we kind of just started it up, you know, together. I don't think we ever expected or didn't know, like, that it was going to blow up the way it has. Mm -hmm. But then at one point, like, I just thought about it, like, I'm either going to do this, you know, or not. And I just said, okay, I'm going to do it. And I went all in. And then she, you know, with the work she does, she can't go in all in with me, but she does as much as she can with me. And she still helps me with a lot of stuff because there's a lot of stuff I'm horrible at. So. 
Well, so it's interesting because you have two different people, two different personalities, excuse me, and taste uh, in knives, I would imagine. How do you represent a singular channel's perspective with two different people, presuming uh, you have different tastes? Um, I don't know. Um, I, uh, it's, it's kind of hard because, you know, like I said, we do have both different personalities, but you know, when we started it, it was just kind of like, we made like, like kind of a pact, like that we weren't going to BS nothing. We we're just going to be ourselves no matter what, no matter if they like us or not. And, uh, you know, I guess we're, we're both our own person. And in the lives, it really comes out, you know. And sometimes, like I think about it after the lives, I'm like, oh my god, everybody's gonna hate me now. They're gonna, they're all gonna unsubscribe, you know. They found out something about me or something. But you know, it just is what it is. And um, we both have a lot of fun with it. So I mean, like I said, she has her own personality. I have mine, and it, it does clash sometimes a little bit because you know time schedules and like say if we're gonna do a giveaway, we want to do it together. Yes. You know, there's times where like, you know, she just can't be there. And then there's times where she really wants to be. So we have to wait. So it does clash a little bit, but we make it work. Uh, so you told us about Mr. Amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, but how else? I mean, which is amazing. I see why yeah. you call him that. And uh, I can uh, I can forward my address to Mr. Amazing uh, after the show. Ha ha. Uh, but uh, so what do you choose? to? How do you get all of the knives you get? They're not all yours, right? So no, how do you get them really. coming through? And uh, what's your process with uh, how things come through and go out and how you take time to review them and such? Well, I do sharpen knives. And ever since I was on here, you know, on here last, you know, I've, um, I have, you know, started sharpening for people. So that's one thing. But that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to review and use it. I'm just going to sharpen. So people do send in knives. I sharpen them, you know, but with the review knives, People you contact me, ask me if I want to check the knife out or if I have yet, and I tell them yes or no, and then uh, they send them through. I basically, you know, ask if I can use them or what I can can and can't do with them because some knives are really incredible, and obviously I'm not going to use it, you know. But then other knives, a lot of people, and even sometimes some really incredible knives, people are like, no, I want you to use it. And I'm thinking like, oh, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? But, you know, I know what not to do with the knife and, you know, I just I use it accordingly. But then a lot of times I want to sharpen the knife. So, you know, I ask them or, you know, maybe I don't, but it helps with the review because I want to tell people how it's sharpened or also if the knife comes and it's not really sharp, I might, you know, I don't want to give bad information on how it cuts. So I'd like to sometimes put an edge on it. But then um, I usually have them, you know, right now it's the holiday. So I have people's knives a little bit longer than normal. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I usually have them for a few weeks. And then after the review, maybe get a couple videos out of it, sometimes a few. And then I send them back. Uh, well, you, it's funny because you just did a video on uh, the SOCOM Elite. Yes. And uh, I loved that. The so I was just carrying my SOCOM Elite, which I have here on the knife cam. And uh, it was. Well, I had a road trip, and this is kind of my road trip knife because uh, it was the first yeah. knife I ever had with a glass breaker. Right. And, uh, this summer, I tested out all my knives with glass breakers, and this one, uh, <laughs> this one did pretty nicely. I wore gloves, unlike you in, in your yeah. <laughs> SoCom video, but but you really abused. No, I don't want to say you abused that knife. You used that knife in yes. many ways, like a like a screwdriver and a pry bar. Tell me. Uh, how is that your knife and and what were the kind of things you put the knife through to to uh to garner your review so this was another one from mr amazing it was another one from mr amazing and you know the the nice and amazing knife it really is but this is a workhorse knife this is a knife that is supposed to be used hard so i didn't want to do a review like every other review where which you know most of my reviews are too but i wanted to be able to say it if i'm going to say this is a hard use knife for other people they're thinking why why is it a hard use knife what can it do that this other knife can't do and it's about the geometry of the knife it is set up 
to pry. It really is. The, the type of geometry the blade has and even the blade shape, it's set up for not heavy prying, but light prying. And, um, you know, I broke down a pallet with it. The problem, the problem was, was I couldn't record it because I didn't have my my tripod so i had to one hand the camera mm -hmm. and just show like one little piece and i also i wasn't trying to, to break the knife or overdo it so that's why i didn't like really go crazy with the camera and the knife one-handed because then i couldn't see like if i'm hitting a nail or something like that so i did have to do that part off camera but i did test the glass breaker out Mm -hmm. And um, I really wanted to see how the edge was after. That was my biggest my biggest thing because if I do some light duty prying, and I and I'm cutting with it all day, you know, um, aside from the glass breaking, you know, what's the edge going to be like? And it did chip a little bit. It did as it should have. It really should have. I don't. There's no knife that shouldn't have chipped. At the, and but in all reality, it worked great. It pried great. It still cut afterwards, and. It actually cuts pretty good considering how thick that blade is. I think it's 187 thousandths thick. I mean, I got I literally got pry bars that are thinner than that. <laughs> so so for but it gets down to 15 thousandths behind the edge, which is pretty thin even for a good slicing EDC knife. So that's pretty incredible. But the type of taper it has right. to the spine is kind of like an axe which is where it gets that prying strength from. So, you know, I wanted to put it to the test and it actually did really good, really, really good. Well, I have to say it was thrilling to watch that because uh, those were things, you know, uh, I would never do with mine because if I broke it, I'd be, you know, I'd be heart, well, not heartbroken, but, uh, you know, I'd be really hacked. I'd have to replace yeah. it or, or maybe I'd feel like, oh, this is cheap junk. But, uh, you know, that's, it's so... Thank you. I, it's great to see someone else abuse their knives or really, really. Sometimes that's what it's about. Some, sometimes that's what it's about. It's that I don't need to do it. I just want to know I can, mm -hmm. you know, and I, it's like that with a lot of my knives. Like I don't have to do it because somebody else already has, and I know it can if I need to. Right. That's why we would buy some of these knives. Well, so in general, what, what, did, what do you look for? What's your wheelhouse and what, what's, um, what criteria do you judge knives by? You know, first off, right off the bat, I love all knives. All knives I love. I find the beauty in all of them. Whether I say I love, you know, great blade geometry, that doesn't mean I don't love the knife that has horrible blade geometry because I love them all. But I really look for good blade geometry. I want it to be easily sharpened. And not just easily sharpened, sharpened multiple times without showing it. Because a lot of knives, you know, even if they have good blade geometry, they don't allow you to sharpen it, but maybe once or twice. So it's good to have that, that capability to sharpen and resharpen your knife, especially, you know, at least a couple times before you start, you know, like hitting a plunger iron or something like that. Then I look for ergos because... When you're cutting, most of the cutting has to do with leverage. Mm -hmm. So you can have a knife with horrible blade geometry that'll cut or it'll feel like it's cutting better than a knife with good blade geometry if it has a good ergos, a good grip on the handle. And if you can get a good grip on the handle, you can actually put your muscle behind your cut and it feels nice and solid so then you can push it through. So I'd like to find good geometry with good ergos for good leverage and ability to resharpen. And then the other thing I really like if I can use my tip because like a knife with too much belly or say a Persian where the tip points up, mm -hmm. I can't do any utility cuts with that without raising my arm up really high to get to the tip. You know what I mean? Like if the yes. tip points up, so I want the tip to be accessible or point down, you know, not necessarily like just like a worn cliff, but even a good drop point to the point to where, you know, the tip points down enough to where I can at least use it. You know what I mean? Like right. if I need yeah. a utility cut, I can do it. Yeah. 
you have that point coming down the center line. You don't have to change your your angle of approach too much with your hand. Um, right. I just want to back up. You said uh, some blades won't allow you to resharpen them more than twice. What do you mean by that? Okay, so when you get a knife, and I'm just going to grab any knife right now. So let's say I'm just going to grab the SOCOM again. The choil area, if they don't leave you anything, like a bit of blade down here to start sharpening, because a lot of times you'll start sharpening and there's the plunge grind right there. So either you got to hit your plunge grind or cut in an, a sharpening choil yourself, which you can do, but sometimes that messes with the closing because sometimes they put the stop pin there, right. you know, like when it closes. So there's lots of little things that go on right here. That's very important for it to be resharpened. And um, so the plunge grind and then also the geometry. So if it has good blade geometry or sorry, thin behind the edge, but then it immediately gets really thick. Then I'm going to sharpen it a couple times, and then my thinness behind the edge is gone. Mm -hmm. So that taper and that slow taper, kind of like, you know, a hollow grind. A hollow grind has a nice slow taper that allows you to, to sharpen forever, basically, and it'll always stay that thinness. So I, I really like seeing that because when I find a knife that doesn't have that ability, I really see how how much of a downfall it is for the knife in the real world, really cutting with it, really sharpening it, and really using it. So the whole question of sharpening choils, I hear a lot of different people who sharpen. I know uh, uh, Rob Bixby, the Apostle P, he's got some very strong opinions uh, about about uh, sharpening choil, uh, sharpening sharpening choils, and if you don't know what that is, uh, it's the little notch right right at the base of the blade near the pivot, or or just near the base of the blade near the ricasso, which yeah. allows you to bring the edge all the way evenly all the way to the end of the blade without getting sort of that um, dead end sort of smile thing that happens right. if you don't. So why do companies like Spiderco, for instance, insist on uh, this kind of thing, you know, where, I mean, on the, in this case, it works okay because right there it shies away, but it looks like one or two sharpening, and then you will have to make a notch there. By the way, well, you're, you know, you're you going to have to you, repair Yeah, that. you can, or you can just keep sharpening up the blade. It, and Spyrical actually is it, not a bad thing because the way they do their plunge grind, if you look at their plunge, it's straight down to the blade. So like right here on the plunge, so this is the plunge grind. The plunge grind is where the, the thickest part of the blade goes down to the edge right here. Mm -hmm. So they go straight to the edge rather than doing a taper. So since they do that, you don't cut into the plunge grind when you sharpen straight up the blade. So it actually winds up working with mm -hmm. a spider coat because of the way they do the plunge grind. Now you can cut in a sharpening trail if you want, which is really easy on a spider co, but you really don't have to as long as you just sharpen straight up the blade. Yeah, which seems like it would be a, a lot easier using the kind of sharpening um, style you do, which is on stones freehand. Uh, yeah. uh, before we get to that, which we will in just a moment, I want to, uh, we were talking about criteria for judging a knife for you, uh, and this will lead into sharpening because we're going to talk about steels too, but what about materials? How much? How important are materials uh, to you? Um, you know, I, I think I love materials, but I know the community has a lot to do with that because, you know, one person has, you know, say aluminum and you're like, oh, man, I need aluminum. Then the next guy has titanium. And the next guy has, you know, my card or whatever, so on and so forth. So I know sometimes the materials might not m matter as much in reality. But then it does because titanium doesn't rust. So that's a good thing. And I always think about those little details. So it does matter, even like with the steels. I love steels because I love sharpening and because I like a long, you know, long lasting edge and seeing how long it lasts. But in all reality, I could get by with 14C28M because I can sharpen, you know. So it's not that big of a deal, but I enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yes, I do. Um, okay, so how did you get into sharpening? You said you uh, grew up around knives. Was is this something you've always done? I, you know, I did. I thought I did. 
Oh, yeah. I thought I sharpened. <laughs> you know, I was taught to, uh, you know, to take the stone that you get out of, say, the knife pouch, whatever, spit on it and mm. use your spit as the oil and then just sharpen on it. And, you know, growing up, I thought, you know, I could sharpen a little bit, but really, I never really got a good edge. Then I started seeing the YouTube videos on it and started really paying attention. And I think it was kind of a, uh, I don't know, a challenge to myself or just like like a man-to-man to somebody else, like me wanting to be better or something. I don't know. You know, something in my head to where I had, it was a challenge and I wanted to overcome it because it was difficult. And when I first started trying, I, you know, I couldn't get that edge that I seen other people have. And so I just basically took it as a challenge and, you know, went all in and I spent a lot of time learning about a year in, I thought I knew everything. I thought I was really good at it, but then I just kept learning more and more. And then I realized how much I didn't know over that year. And, you know, I mean, it, just like riding a bike or anything like that, you know, you're going to, you're going to get better and better and better as you keep going, you know? So you use, uh, you're a freehand sharpener. You use stones. Um, Before I ask you to show me how, because you have a kind of an interesting technique, uh, I would like you to tell me why stones and not one of these fancy uh, new <laughs> consistent angle sharpeners where you can just put it on there, set it up and then just watch TV. And So I, uh, I feel, I find in my, and this is my opinion. There's, this is nothing against anybody. I, as long as you can have a sharp edge, even if you have to send it to somebody, as long as you're not using, having a dull edge, you know, I love that. But me personally, I find an essence to, freehanding almost i don't know if it's like historical or you know i i find it i find that it feels therapeutic when i sharpen and i just feel like there's just something more to putting your edge on a knife and sharpening it and this is just you know me personally how i feel so when i'm sharpening i like knowing and feeling that, that i did that and you know my knife my edge and that i didn't use a machine like if I was out in the field and I had nothing, I could do it with a rock if I had to. And I just, I think I like that. Uh, I don't know, kind of like that, that, that roots feeling, that feeling of how everybody's done it for a thousand years. And, and then I also try to, I never compete with any other freehander. I never do that because everybody's got their own techniques. I always try, find myself competing with KMEs. Mm. <laughs> I tried to, and you know, for a long time, I could not compete at all. The K is a consistent angle sharpener that's very, yeah. very popular. Yeah. Actually, I have one, and haven't quite gotten the hang of it, but um, I don't, I don't work on it too much. Um, with the with the sharpening by hand, I mean, I would imagine you do it enough, you can feel it's 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 probably something you can do with your eyes closed uh, to a great extent. Definitely. Mm-hmm you can probably feel that micro edge and, and when it's just right on the stone, yeah. tell me, how do you keep a consistent, uh, how do you keep a consistent angle? Uh, well, let me just preface this. I'm sorry. Let me just preface yeah. this by saying um, you sharpen two of my knives uh, so far. You rescued well, this one, which I, you know, I bought from DLT trading and promptly dropped uh, face down on the floor. This is my, uh, my uh, XM 18 Warncliffe. Uh, and then, and then also, same thing with my um, Emerson Sachs. Dropped it on the tip. Also just wanted it sharper. And you made this chisel blade scream and sharp. And when you look at both of these edges, uh, and there are more to send. I know I've been saying that for months, but I got a lot of projects going on. Um, <laughs> but uh, both of these edges are incredibly consistent. And I mean, what I mean by that is the thickness um, from the from the... Uh, from the foot of the blade to the tip of the blade, the uh, the width of that edge is perfect and consistent and extremely sharp. So how do you do that without uh, a railed guidance system or something like that? Okay, so I um, 
I first, but when I first started, I didn't do this. And I always, that was my biggest problem was getting that flat edge. I could convex an edge really good. And I had no problem getting a really sharp edge. And there's nothing wrong with a convex edge. Convex edges are awesome. And sometimes I think it belongs on certain knives. But I wanted to have that perfect flat edge. So, but I didn't want just my my uh, stubbornness was saying you can't use any type of guide. Like you, you have to do it by hand. And so I figured out a system to use my fingers to use as a guide. And I've taught it. And multiple videos on the channel but i basically um and there's a couple ways you can go about it like, but i basically take my knife take the little spartan mm -hmm. i basically take a measurement on my finger so i know basically in the middle of my finger is 17 degrees so and i'll pick a spot on the knife that's the spot i have to touch every single time so say if it's right there i'll put a dot with a marker that I can just take off with, you know, rubbing alcohol. Mm -hmm. I put a dot on the blade and then I match those up. And then that's, and I put the edge on the stone and then bottom of my finger is hitting the stone as well, which makes it to where when I go back and forth, that, that gap from the spine to the stone is always the same. So then my edge an angle to my edge is consistent and I can move, I can do whatever I want without it changing it's still going to be the same and then i match the two up with my pointer so that when i go the opposite way let me see if i can get on camera it's the same way i'm like this so picture that my finger right here is on the stone and the edge is on the stone and i go back and forth you know if i need to turn and you can do that by touching the by using the front of the blade too like if I was going to go like this, instead of going like this with mm -hmm. my fingers, I can go like this. And when I do that, I let the pads of my fingers basically be the guide and I can feel right where it's at. Now, right now, since I've been doing it for so long, I could do it without doing that and get a pretty good perfect edge. But the journey from trying to get a perfectly flat edge to getting one, that is what made me very successful. Okay, so you're you're talking about a very flat edge versus a convex edge. Uh, yes. Describe a little bit uh, in in practical terms uh, what they would look like in cross section, and then what the difference is in terms of utility and performance. Okay, so a convex edge is basically like this, where the edges of the the, the edge down to the apex is rounded. And then a V grind, so with flat edges down to the tip, to the tip of the apex, it's flat. So one, the the, the convex edge is always going to be stronger. It is a stronger edge. But in my opinion, it's not as sharp. Now, when I say not as sharp, it's very close. Like, so a lot of people would not be able to tell the difference in that, sh that level of sharpness. But... Um, and, you know, th this, I think, is probably arguable about mm -hmm. what goes through material easier. Some people say that because the V-grind has a shelf, you know, at the top of the bevel right here, where the top of the bevel would be, it has a shelf. Some people say that that's harder for material to go over, so that creates drag. And then some people say, well, the convex edge is rounded, so that, you know, that would go through better, kind of like... Um, Oh, I don't know how to explain it. Kind of like but aerodynamics, kind of like a like a rounded yeah. car slips through the air quicker. Right, right. But but I think because the edge, the tip of the apex, is smaller, and going up to the top of the bevel is a a slower pitch, if you know what I mean. Because yeah. it's you know it's sharper from the point to the top. It's it's closer together. So. It's thinner when you go through materials versus convex, which is going to be a little bit wider. So you're not going to, it's not going to be as strong as a convex edge, but it does. Uh, well, all fixed angle systems create the V grind. Well, at least most, I guess there are systems that do convex edges. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, you're mostly going to find fixed angle systems doing V grinds. And then most freehanders, not all, because a lot of them can do incredible flat edges, do convex edges. Okay. So I think um, the convex, you know, as you just described it, uh, its main, its main benefit, it is very sharp, but its main benefit is it's a little bit more robust and yes. maybe it goes through materials better. I think maybe, and that's why you see that uh, that certain kind of, certain materials, right? Like wood. That's why you see that kind of grind on outdoor knives, bigger knives, knives right. that are taking a lot of impact. Um, but uh, uh, you know, I have a few. I have one that Emler sharpened, and I think he does kind of a convex, or it, it seems yeah. like it. And uh, that that is a, a wicked sharp. Uh, convex on a small, you know, it's on a, it's on this. Actually, I have it right here, the Spidey Chef. So yeah. uh, nice edge on that, I, and a different feel, yeah, a slightly yeah. different feel than uh, than a V ground edge. But you know, sharp is sharp is sharp. And, yeah. Uh, so all of this sharpening and and this sort of um, evolution that you've gone through uh, since you realized, geez, I haven't really been sharpening all these years. Uh, what have you learned about steel? Um, steel versus steel versus super steel. What's your favorite versus, you know, you know, um, one thing I've learned is that, uh, because a lot of people think that, or I'm not going to say think, but a lot of people have problems sharpening some of the super steels. And really it's just about your stone. If you have the right stone, the steel will be easy, to, easier to sharpen. Most steels are all easy to sharpen. Some just take longer. But heat treat is something I've learned a lot about. I've literally had steels that are supposed to be the easiest to sharpen. And it is the hardest to sharpen. And then I've had some of the, the what people would call the hardest to sharpen steels be super easy. So I found certain steels, you know, if they have a better heat treat, are incredibly easy to sharpen. They mm -hmm. de really nicely. They just, they, when they go across the stone, you can actually feel that it's a good heat treat. Like it's nice and hard and just the way it goes across the stone. And then some feel like basically like you're sharpening putty if it, if it has a bad heat treat. So I think that is a very important thing. The who's doing the steel, um, you know, like where, what company. And, you know, I think that that's very important and almost more important then what steel, you know, because you can have a great steel, but if it has a crap heat treat, it, yeah. it's, you're not getting the performance out of it that, you, that you're thinking you're going to get. Yeah, and so, that you're paying for, that you're paying handsomely for. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned burr, uh, and I was going to ask you, what's the number one most important thing about sharpening? But would you say that the burr is an important thing to keep your eye on? I, I'd say it's the and as people will argue this with me, but I'd say it's the second most important thing. Number one, I would say is following the grip pattern. Because if you're paying attention to the grip pattern, you will already know when it's going to have a burr without even touching it. You can see it. Uh, so yeah. you watch you watch the grip that you're actually putting on the bevel, and if you're watching it, you can see it go from the top of the bevel down. And you can see if it's consistent. You can see if you missed anything. And then when you see, say, the scratch pattern go all the way down to the to the tip of the edge, you know, from the top of the bevel down to the tip of the edge, you can watch the scratch pattern go all the way down as you're sharpening. Then you already know I got a burr on the other side because I can see my scratch pattern. And then also how uniform it is, how it's all consistent, goes the right direction. And then it's when you go to your next stone, it'll be even easier because you can see that you got the whole thing and you got the other scratch pattern that was on there out. So I, and then the burr, when you feel the burr, because uh, this is one thing too, you can have a burr all the way across your edge and still not be done sharpening and still not need to flip over because your angle might've been too too high and you're just getting the edge anyways mm -hmm. so you didn't even get the bevel the bevel's not sharpened at all but yet you got a big burr so in, because, in that in that case you would not be able to see your grind lines uh your scratch lines all the way from the top of the edge to the edge right right you would see it basically like from halfway or just right at the tip of the, the edge. edge right 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 
and and so that that would be a false indicator right there of right of, of what's going on so stropping um to me uh stropping is one of those things that uh you know i do with the knives i use uh, all the time uh, and it's also something that i do just to calm myself down and to <laughs> relax it feels good and you walk away with a nice shiny sharp knife um yeah. before we move on to your best best knives of 2020 a couple of questions uh like that i want to ask you i'm curious how you feel about stropping and how important it is and and how people should think about stropping i think i think stropping is incredibly important but i think almost i don't want to say more important but i think having the right compound for stropping because i i know i've had compounds that especially when I first started like using compounds and stropping, I wasn't getting like the results, like everybody in the world was talking about and it confused me. And I really didn't pay as much attention to stropping as I should have. But then when you get the right compounds or, you know, it's, it's inc one thing you, you, you should do it. It's a must not only after sharpening, but to prevent sharpening. So you can do it in between you use your knife, come home, slap it a couple times on the strop, then that'll keep your edge nice and keen for a long time. And honing is another thing. If you can hone your edge, you won't need to sharpen it nowhere near as many times and the life of your steel will last like forever. Okay, oh, what's honing? Honing is like, so So say if I've sharpened the knife or whatever, I've, I've used it. Now, when I strop, the strop isn't quite getting everything out of the edge. So then I take a very high grit stone. So say like a, a spider or a spider co ultra fine ceramic or hmm. um, any type of very high grit. You basically want to use the, high, the, the, the grit that's on the edge already, the highest grit that's already on there. And you just take a couple passes on it. Kind of like you've heard of people doing um, the, the ceramic rods. Yes. You know, I'd say with the kitchen knife, how they take a couple swipes, kind of like that. But instead of doing that, because that's creating a micro bevel, that's what that's doing. Instead of doing that, you're doing the entire edge bevel across the stone. And it's very easy to do. You don't have to know how to sharpen to do that because you're only doing two passes on each side. That's it. But that's going to do what that strop can't do. Then you strop. And that will keep your edge going for so long before you need to sharpen. Now, some people will call honing like the end of sharpening. So I've went through all my stones and now I'm at my last stone and I'm sharpening um, the, on the last stone, polishing it or something like that. That would be honing. It's basically a really high stone that you're using. High grit is what I mean. So, uh, so stropping and honing, um, in it, uh, instead of sharpening all the time, because that way you'll maintain your edge longer and you will also probably maintain the blade longer. I guess you maintain yeah. that longer, the blade's going to last you longer. Uh, yeah. it's, it seems to make sense because you're stropping and honing. You're not removing metal or if you are, no. it's, like, it's, it, it's, it's so, so small. It, you're not removing metal really. You're basically just taking the, because when you've used your knife, the edge, what it's going to do, say if this is your, your edge, after you've used it, basically there's like teeth like this. So basically when you hone or strop, you're straining those teeth back to that edge. So you're not removing any steel when you hone or strop. At least, I mean, very, very little, if any, depending on the compound. Because and there's actually a compound I want to talk about if we can. Yeah. Um, I uh, I got some Veneve, Veneve stones, uh, you know, Veneve uh, diamond infused stones. So it's basically... Um, a resin with diamonds infused inside of it. Well, they sent me, the company sent me a, a few stones, which is absolutely incredible. These things are, aren't cheap. They're pretty expensive. So thank you, Vinny. Then they sent me some of their diamond paste stropping compound. And I wanted to try one of their really low grits, something that was real like they had a lot of diamonds in it. Yeah. And so I asked if they would send me that and they did. And this stuff is insane. How it's, it's very, very aggressive, incredibly aggressive, but like 
when I got home, this edge was a factory edge. I ran it across that that uh, that compound, and it looks like I sharpened it. It mm -hmm. put a new grip pattern all over it. It uh, feels like a sharpened edge. I went down to a low or a, um, what you would call a higher grit, but um, but more of a polishing uh, compound after that one. But it's so aggressive in a good way because it actually works instead of say just uh polishing your edge it actually puts a grit across your mm -hmm, edge mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you can practically sharpen with the strop with that type of compound wow. so I, I blew my mind when i used it because i never would have thought that you could get such a um a good edge from stropping using that type of compound. I mean, it, it's, it's incredible. I, I have to up my stropping game. I still use a homemade strop um, that I love. It's right here. It's just, you know, an old piece of belt on uh, on a, on a piece of wood. And then when I first built it, uh, I would put like aluminum polish on there, you know, which will yeah. work in a pinch. And now I put this green strop on uh, that's supposed to go on a polishing wheel. I got the wrong stuff. And now, after this conversation, I have to get I have to get a nice strop, and I want to try some of that compound and 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 some others of, of varying grit. Um, it's a lot cheaper than you think. I mean, I on their website, it's like five or six bucks for for their paste, um, you know, per whichever one you want. But that's a pretty good price because the diamond spray, which is also really good, but that's <laughs> more expensive though. Yeah. Colloidal so, diamonds, <laughs> diamonds in suspension. Yeah, <laughs> man. Uh, so I want to I want to shift gears because uh, I want to find out about. Uh, it seems like this year you've had uh, such an amazing roster of knives come through. I mean, you've always uh, you've always had a lot of stuff going, but uh, this year, I mean, just some insanely cool knives. What? Thank you. What have been? Yeah, yeah, and and uh, well, so what have been your favorite knives of twenty twenty? um that have come out this year you know that that's a real tough one <laughs> Bob. um so are you talking about knives that i've checked out or knives that i own yes okay we'll, so we'll do both <laughs> that, that i own um well these the ones i'm about to show are from mr amazing so let me start with that this is a hinder and he sent me the titanium blue hardware and the my car, he sent me multiple scales for for almost all the hinders he sent. Wow! So that's incredible because I've ne I've never gotten to own a hinder. Sent me an XM twenty four mm. with carbon fiber scales with also extra scales, of course. Nothing but the best from Mister Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um and I'm I'm not trying to be cocky, I hope you know. No, um, no, I think it's also, I think it's amazing. I'm mentioning Mr. Amazing, but I need in the same breath to mention the Shadow Man, who's another guy on the channel that I call the Shadow Man because he stays in the shadows and he's always watching, but nobody knows who he is. Mm. And he gave us a, a bunch of knives too. So we got the React K2 oh, from God, the Shadow that, Man. man. Love that. Absolutely I got mine incredible. close by. And I have to say this too. There's a couple knives that I, I sent out to some reviewers. So one is the Shiro Goroff F3R from Mr. Amazing. That is probably my favorite knife of the year. That knife is about as good as it gets. Um, now, we showed the Yojumbo. That was from Shadow Man. We have the Rockstead Higo. That's just unreal. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Beautiful. Is that, uh, is that wood on top or is that a uh, micarta? Yes. No, it is a wood. And then the, the steel is heat treated to, I think, 66.4. That's the thing about rock studs is that they do an – they even have the, the dent in there to show you. But they're um, the precision in the build, and it comes with a leather slip. Because this one doesn't have a um, a clip. So those who are unfamiliar, Rockstead is a product. Technically, it's a production knife company out of Japan that makes 
unbelievably high end uh, knives like the one you just saw with super polish and uh, and incredible heat treats and and yeah. I, I've never held one myself, but man, are they works of of. We art. need to get one in your hands then. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> then we got. This is the hinder of the Karagat, all titanium. We did get extra scales for it, but of course. Um, nothing, nothing and but then that. we have the another three inch. This one's without the flipper tab, so a non flipper. With, so how, uh, sorry. How well with, does that work without the flipper? Amazing. It's the detent is completely different. It's not like a regular hinder. I mean, you can, it's so fidgety. I mean, it's like nothing. I to, love those three to flip. You actually have to be careful because it's so fidgety. Then um this one with the the fuller, you can easily reverse oh, flex. Sweet. I mean easily because it's got the fuller in it. Mm -hmm. But um what else we got here? We got we got a bunch. Um then uh we've got the spider co gail bradley too and then slicey dicey gave me these scales these are my card of scales thanks slicey then we got deep carry clip love this knife this knife is just it's a worker i also modded it because it doesn't uh the lock bar so hard to get to so had to mod that um this is a tucson ts195 but cool. it's a integral this thing is incredible. This thing is, it's crazy what's coming out of Tucson when you yeah. see something like this. I mean, it's an integral and it's so flicky. You got every way of deployment. You got top flipper, back flipper. You got the reverse flick and it's got the frag pattern on it. Yeah, that design overall is just amazing. I love yeah. that. And it's you like can see kind of like a sway back. Yeah. Now, um, I also just got this one. This is another Tucson. This one is like a hinder because it has the thumb studs that uh, become the mm -hmm. stop pen. Yeah. Now, this thing is insane. I took the screw out. It only has two screws, the pivot and this bottom screw here. Took this screw out. It stays centered, and you can use it with no blade player lock rock with wow. only the pivot screw. Yeah, two sun knives. I've 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 experienced uh, a few of them, and they are amazing. They're amazing yeah. what they what they're able to make. Um, I could keep going. I don't I don't want. I mean, unless if you want me to, because well, like I, I said, he sent me a lot of gifts, man. <laughs> I, I was jeez. I want to I want to ask you what you're looking forward to in 2021. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about new knives, not not uh, not anything uh, that might come to you from from past days. But what what have you gotten your you know with your ear to the ground? What's coming up that you're excited about? Okay, so um, I know this hasn't dropped yet, but Slicey Dicey has one. Spartan dropped a new knife, but uh, or TRM too. T sorry, I think it's um what no, I think Metal Complex did the Spartan. And then Slicey Dice did the TRM. He's got yeah. the TRM with the access lock. Yeah. I don't know when – I can't say when that's going to drop. I have no idea. But I know it's coming because they got it made. That looks really cool. Now, another one that's already out, but I'm – I really – I know everybody else got to check it out. The one is the Waypoint. Um, oh, yeah. That is incredible. Another one, the React uh, Field Duty. That thing looks absolutely. Is that a, a Leong Ma? What's the yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And that I love. Now another one. I have the the prototype here, and I think I don't know. If, I don't think you've had him on the show, but you should. Alien knives. Alien gauge. Oh, okay. This is his prototype. Ooh. Um, this thing is eight thousandths behind the edge. <laughs> one of the tallest, thinnest hollow grinds. I mean, on a production knife, it's you'd have to see it to believe it. How it's, thin and tall this thing is. S thirty five VN, nice thin blade stock. It, it's amazing. Well, can set knives are the ones that are making it. He just did a a Kickstarter, yeah. and this should be dropping here pretty soon. Like I said, can set knives are the ones that are doing it, and can set does incredible work. 
So I'm looking forward to the to the actual version of that. He let me keep the prototype. Oh, that's so um, cool. You know, I want to show you one other knife right now um, because it is incredible. And Arno Bernard, I think this was on your channel before, actually. That was not that on my channel. Uh, but I, that is I, – I was looking at that on your the, channel. The with Orca. Now, there was one major fail with this. I might what? as well just talk about it and get it out of the bag. So it has bad lock failure. Oh. So, but I have no doubt in my mind that because I've talked to other people that own the same knife and they said there's a solid. So it's so a I have no I have no doubt in my mind that uh that Arnold Bernard wouldn't fix it. With right. not a doubt in my mind. You can send it probably right to him and he'll no problem. So I don't want to discredit or make it seem like that's a horrible thing because if a if a knife maker is willing to take care of it then it's not a big deal. It's only a big deal when they won't take care of, you know, the problem. So, yeah. Yeah. When it's a fluke, when it's just a bad, you know, it's things just, happen. Yeah, exactly. Things, things happen. happen. And, and by the way, um, if you look at that uh, prototype you're holding up, it looks like a, um, just the blade. It looks like a, um, uh, what's it called? A skyline, a Kershaw skyline, including the flip. Oh, That's yeah. Been like, yeah. Widen. I, I, I got to say that that is a very appealing design to me, especially with that tall hollow grind on that. Can you see, his logo? Blade. Can you see uh, his logo right now? No, put your hand, put your hand behind it. It might. Okay, be. there we go. Oh, let me see it. Uh, no, what is it? Right, It's right here. It's just a little alien head. Okay. Uh, I guess it's not going to go. Oh. Ah, whatever. That it's it's cool. an alien head though, but it looks really cool. It's got a G10 scale with a titanium liner underneath it. Nice. Um, and then titanium frame lock. It is a big knife. Don't get me wrong. It's a big knife. It looks pretty thin though. A mega slicer. I'm mm -hmm. talking about mega slicer. The the um, handle though, though the handle is broad, it looks like a thin, a thin yeah, it's still thin, like even the handle, but it's broad enough this way. And this is another thing like about like leverage. It, it's thin this way, so in the pocket, it carries great for how big it is. But since it has depth this way, it gives you actually something to hang on to. Yeah. So you have the, the force behind a thin knife. Because, you know, like say this knife. This is the kite fin, the wee kite fin. Yeah, super cool. thin behind the edge, super thin hollow grind. It cuts like a champ. This thing's a, a really good cutter, but it's thin and small in the hand. So you're not going to get leverage out of this. Now, this is going to cut great. You can break up your recycling, whatever. But now something like this, you can really get the leverage behind the edge. So it feels like it's cutting better. Do you know what I mean? Yes, When I you do. have something thin and small in your hand, it's shifting around and moving around your hand. You don't feel like you're cutting great but then you have something that fills your hand out yeah. you know it feels like you're you're cutting with an axe that goes to your point earlier uh just with blade geometry if the yeah. <laughs> if you cut yourself on one of the many knives you yeah have. when i dropped when the, the the blade dropped on the one it came down and it got it all right so as long as as long as you can get a great ergonomic grip on it uh you can you can horse a blade through something even if it's not the thinnest behind the edge and i think that's uh yeah, I mean, I think I think that's important. Now, I'm not saying that that's how all knives should be, because even like the TRM Atom, it's a great slicer. And the way it gets its slicing capabilities is from the thin spine. Mm -hmm. It's not thin behind the edge. It's a thin spine. So it's going to pass through materials really well. The handle, however, is thin, too. So you're not going to have, don't get me wrong, it's great EDC. I, this, I would yeah. almost give this like EDC of the year. Yeah, but you're not gonna have the ergos of say like a grip tilling it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, where it really fills your palm. Yeah, in 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 the uh, in the width. All right. Yes. So so Jared, I wanna I wanna uh, I wanna wrap with a speed round. If you're familiar okay. with the show, when I talk to people such as yourself who review knives and uh, work with knives and have developed opinions, I want to find out in a one word answer. Uh, okay. Through about sixteen questions or so, seventeen questions, something like that. Uh, what your what your feelings are, and we'll and we'll have the complete cut of your jib by the time this is all done. All right. So, uh, are you ready, sir? 
I'm ready. Okay. All right. Speed round. Fixed or folder? Folder. Flipper or thumb stud? Thumb stud. Washers or bearings? Yeah. Bearings. Tip up or tip down? Oh, tip up. Tanto. Unless if it's a cell com. <laughs> yeah, right. A, so, a cell com <laughs> or a military. Those are the only two. Right. <laughs> uh, Tanto or Bowie? Which kind of Tanto? Japanese or American? No, I'm just joking. Bowie. I'll go <laughs> Bowie. All right. So <laughs> Bowie or Bowie? Bowie. Oh, you're from Chicago. I, I thought you would say Bowie. Us union, yeah. us union boys yeah. got to stick together. Uh, yeah. Hollow ground or flat ground? Hollow. I agree with that. I love that. Uh, full size or small? Full size. Gentleman's knife or tactical knife? Tactical. Automatic or bally sung? Ooh, auto. ZT or we? <laughs> <laughs> Um, just because it's USA made, I'll go ZT. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, so bench made access lock or Hogue able lock? Hogue. Um, M390 or 20 CV? 20 CV. Milled titanium or spring clip? A, a good milled titanium spring clip. There are those. I, I repeat my question. Milled titanium or spring clip? <laughs> Milled titanium. All right. Carbon fiber or micarta? Micarta. Definitely. Finger choil or no choil? Choil. Okay. Form or function? Oh, function. And finally, your desert island knife. That's one, one knife you get to keep. For the rest of your life. Desert Island? Yeah. You don't have you know to be what? on a desert island surviving. I, it's just a, a metaphor. It's it's your last knife, and that's all you get. You want this video to last all night, man. Just, uh, just one. I it, it. Uh, doesn't see, have to be in your possession. Oh, it doesn't have to be in my possession? No. Well, I, I think I should pick something in my possession. But you know what? Uh I'm just going to say this because I feel like, uh, man, I, I don't know, man. Oh, I like how I you're like, laboring I feel over like this. You kind of got me against the corner because I've said this many times on my channel that the hardest thing for me to do is pick one night. Like the, I, I've never made a video on that because I can't do it. <laughs> so I'm just going to say just just to, to end it. Unofficially. Just give me an unofficial. Unofficially, life. I'll pick the hinder, XM18. And I, I, there, there's so many things wrong with my answer right now. <laughs> well, it's a solid choice. And, uh, and hey, man, I'm not going to hold you to it. There is no one holding you to it. I know you that's, that's what I always say on the channel. I always say tomorrow will be a different answer. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So. Uh, right now, I love what it's like. If you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. Right now, I got this in your in my hand, and I'm just like, this is the best that, thing I've ever seen. <laughs> that is a good answer, man. I like that. <laughs> I like Jared, that. Jared, it's been a pleasure having you on the Knife Junkie podcast. Um, uh, I love yours and Kara's channel, and I think you guys do uh, an awesome, uh, I think you bring an, an awesome angle to the, to the, uh, knife reviewing world and the knife world on YouTube and in social media and, and your take is great. And I love it that you don't always agree, uh, a, because I'm married and B, because we all have different, different opinions and different. Keep it real. Keep it real, knife. right? Absolutely. Keep it real. All righty, sir. Thank you so much for coming on the show and well, thank you. Bob. You know, I'll be talking thank to you, you soon. All righty, sir. Appreciate take care. It, Bob. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. 
There he goes, Jared Neeb. It was always a pleasure talking with him. Uh, he's come on Thursday Night Knives a few times, and well, he's come on a lot of stuff. We've had a we've had a lot of conversations on this show uh, and behind the scenes. So it's great to have him on the interview show. And uh, I I know from holding this in my hand uh, and using the knives he's sharpened that uh, we should take his uh, heed his advice, and that is stropping and honing. Yes, you want to get your knife sharp, so sharpen it, learn how to do that, or send it to Jared to have him sharpen it. But always make sure you take care of your blades by stropping and honing. Don't remove too much metal and just uh, recondition that blade after you get uh, home from work. And so you know you can take his advice. He uses the hell out of his knives, and then he sharpens them and uh, and makes them beautiful. Uh, their channel is awesome. Please check out Neve's Knives. Uh, Kara, unfortunately, didn't join in this episode. Uh, but I love their interplay, and uh, you can get a lot of um, you can get a lot of counterpoint from the two of them when they talk about knives, and uh, and that's that's what's fun. But that's also what what uh, expands the information that's coming to you from them. So, uh, well, for Jared Neve and for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, uh, I'd like to say thanks for tuning in and checking out the show. If you have uh, any any interest in leaving a message, remember the listener line seven two four four six six four four eight seven. Uh, leave us a message and you will hear your voice on the air. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And please remember, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.